I stand in the midst of a multitude Of those from every tribe and town We are your people Redeemed by your blood Rescued from death by your love This is Uriakari Baptist Church the Garden of Champions. You are about to listen to a message from the Lord through his servant, Reverend Matthew Aujola. God bless you as you listen. Let your heart be free enough to worship him this morning. Let your heart worship him this morning. Let your heart worship him this morning. Let your heart worship him this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we acknowledge the truth that without you, no other person. You are the ancient of days. You are the only one who bears the name I am. When you open the door, nobody can shut. When you shut, no power can open. When you say yes, no power can say no. And when you say it is over, nobody can start the project again. This morning we reference you. Our maker, our leader, our Lord, our God, our righteousness. He who was, he who he is, and he who shall be. You are greater than the greatest. You are bigger than the biggest. You are the most high, the excellent father, the perfect redeemer, the Lord of Lord, and the King of Kings, the everlasting father, the governor of the universe, the redeemer of our souls. We worship you. The soon coming king, we exalt you. Dominion belongs to you. Authority belongs to you. Power is yours. We thank you this morning for giving us the privilege to worship you, to sing your praise, and to open our hearts in your adoration. We count it not a small privilege. We count it an equal opportunity. This Abraham will have loved to do, but he was not privileged. Isaac will have loved to enjoy, he was not privileged. Satan messed it up, but thank you because he didn't allow it us to mess it up. We thank you this morning. Accept our thanks, Lord. Amen. Lord, we ask in our lives be big, be glorified, Amen. daily be magnified. Amen. Thank you, Father. In your word this morning, bless us. Amen. Open our eyes. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Let's give God a round of applause as we sit down this morning. First and foremost, let me first appreciate you once again for, uh, for buying this book. For your donations and for your gifts and for buying and for giving to others. I count it a wonderful show of love and support. But more than that, there's out of all my six books, I don't just like people to buy. Especially this one, I don't just like you to buy. I like you to read it. I like you to read it for one singular purpose. It will open up a lot of things in your world. It's very, don't just buy it. Please read it. And I felt 
from today, I shall begin to teach from this book. Probably in the next five or six sermons, apart from next week that we shall be having uh, our health week. But in the next six sermons or so, I'll be taking on this book. And I want to pay very keen attention because I felt uh, charity should begin from home. It would not be fine if I'm given the privilege of coming to other churches and say, come and talk to us about this, and I've not done the same in my church. Then, have I been fair to my people? No. And I've decided to put the title as Mystery of Favor. Mystery of Favor. And that is under which uh, we are going to treat it for the next six uh, weeks or so by the grace of God. Forces of Favor and provoking the invisible grace of God to work feasibly for you. Provoking the invisible grace of God to work physically for you. How do you bring spiritual and intangible wealth? How do you bring it down To the physical world, how do you convert it? How do you convert spiritual wealth into physical wealth? And that is this is not the first time the Bible is talking about this. The Bible talks about it says so uh, your your wealth into heaven where moth, and it talked about that you will reap it on earth. How do you convert spiritual currencies into material currency is going to be a very powerful thing. How do you convert that? How do you bring it to reality? I'm not going to heaven now. You are not going to heaven now. But God has given us the grace to tap into spiritual world by grace. And how do we bring that wealth in the spiritual world into the physical world? Like I said, when we were launching the book, this thought has stayed with me now for more than four years. And I will tell you what gave back to it. Around a particular time in my life, I felt nothing was happening to me. And uh, I have friends, they will come and tell me testimonies about what God has done for them. How somebody met them and wrote a choice of 100,000 naira for them. How somebody will tell you that Somebody gave me a car. And how somebody will come and tell me, uh, praise the Lord, in our church, somebody gave us two million naira. And to me, nothing was happening. And it was like, uh, God was so good to everybody except me. And I felt bad. I felt bad. I felt so discouraged. I felt, am I truly called? Did God really love me? Is there anything that I ought to be doing I have not been doing. And I remember that year, closing six years now, I knelt down with my wife that December, I mean that December, and I said, God, we don't have any prayer point for the next year. We want a substantial gift too, as a couple. One. Number two, we want a substantial gift as a church. And that was the church I was pastoring then. I want to see whether what they are telling me, is it a fake or is it true? Is it real? Is it genuine? Is it working? Why should everything be happening with others and not me? What have I done wrong? I have prayed. I have fasted. I have fasted so much that I was having a lot of body ache and sicknesses. Then I remember that following year, something started happening like a joke. It was first a check, and uh, I couldn't believe it. In fact, I was afraid of taking it to the bank because I was doubting whether they would give me the cash because I've never collected it so big. And it was like a joke later on, later, later on. We were having building, and somebody came again and gave me another 500,000 Naira for the church building, another for person for another 500,000 for the church building, and another 200,000 for the church building again. And when we wanted to buy the extra plot of land by the side of the church, 
Somebody came live and direct and brought one million naira cash again. One Sunday, I said, wow, it is real. <laughs> it is real. It is real. And ever since I can, I can tell you, God is faithful. God is faithful. Then I sat down, I started asking God, this issue of people meeting you and blessing you, what is it all about? What is it all about? What is it all about? How can this be happening? How can it be a daily? I wanted to be Oliver Twist. I want more. Because <laughs> who would not like such to be happening every day? Every day can be a Christmas. Abby? Every day can be a Christmas. So, and it was also like a joke. Within the same experience also, my wife got a job. Somebody who graduated since, graduated since 1995 could not get a job until about six years ago. And it was like a joke. We just, after all frustration and uh, I was nagging the members, they are wicked, they are desired, I'm fighting with God, I was fighting with people, not knowing that people are not my problem, they may have their own problem, but that is their own problem. So, until I met Another person, I just tell him, my wife will need a job. I say, ah, I learned that social person is in your church, an Anglican person. And we went to him, and it was like a joke and like a joke. And he gave us an open check. He said, anywhere you want us to post your wife, pastor, mention it. I said, ah. It was like a joke. While others are posted off the beach and all the rest. And from then, I started questioning because I want to make it a lifelong issue. I don't want it to be just once and for all experience. I don't want one year, two year thing. I want it to be a forever experience with me. And I started searching the scriptures. And as I started searching the scriptures, trying to look into the lives of people who carried grace and favor, I discovered that this is possible in my life and in anybody's life. And why? Because God is a respecter of who? Of nobody. I'm telling you, he respects nobody. Life operates by principles. And if you could get the principle, God wouldn't, whether you are black or yellow, green or white, it doesn't matter who you are, God will surely honor his word in your life. And if you go through all this very well, I was asking myself, are there remote factors? Like any event, good deeds, goodwill, occurrence, or situation which the recipient is in or demonstrated that neither state or motivates the assistance? Are there things I can do to steer up favor on my direction. I tried to see the life of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was not a man, was not the only man around there. He was a castigated sinner. But that day Christ said, you today, I will dine in your house. I will eat in your house. He was not the only person there. There are plenty of others there who are thronging at Jesus. They want to catch a glimpse of him. They want to touch him. They want him to heal, heal them. They want him to do one or two things for them. But for Zacchaeus, one thing was his desire. I want to see him. And that day, he caught the attention of the master. He won his favor beyond the realm of the desire to reality. Jesus followed him life to his house. I don't know how it will look like to you. For maybe in the midst of the crowd and you are just there, fashion is passing by and uh, and he just said, uh, John, I'm going to your house today. He said, okay, I don't, my house came. Just like that. Anything around that? 
Bartimaeus, the blind. Oh, uh, there are many blind people there in the land. Why should only be Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus only? And he just shouted, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, have mercy. Jesus Christ, the son of David, have mercy on me. And that was it. And before you say Jesus is Lord, his eyes were opened. What about Mary, the woman, the lady who lived in obscurity? No obvious indication or mentioning of her lineage or background or anything good about this lady. Yet, she was picked out of thousands and millions in her own day. And she was picked to give birth to the Messiah. You wonder what could this be? And that's why I called the issue of favor mystery. Mystery. And when I mean mystery, I know that you know very well that when we talk about mystery, we are talking about something that is esoteric, something that is hidden from the eyes, a knowledge that is hidden. But thank God for Christianity. Christianity is not like other religions where the knowledge of certain level or certain degree of interaction with the divine only reside with few as if it's their birthright. No. Our own mystery is that is an open knowledge provided you can be patient enough to key into it. It's hidden, but it's an open knowledge hidden knowledge is only hidden for those who are not ready to plug in to key in to search into it or people have tried to despise it i know for us in africa anything we don't understand it must be power of satan is either it is a demon or he has done juju Why is issue of favor a mystery? It's also a mystery because the effect is so outstanding. Because you can just, just, just a dot of favor can turn things around in just a split second. This young boy who has been in prison for how many years, we don't know. And one day, something happened in the palace and they said, go and bring him. And they told him the king wanted to see you. And the man left the prison and he never came back to the prison. And from that place, he came to the palace and he became the prime minister. And the man called Joseph. Just a split second. Just, just like that. Probably his friend would have been asking, wouldn't that useless boy come back again? But that was the last day they would ever see him there. Favor is a mystery. Favor is a mystery. Favor is a mystery. And I call it a mystery thirdly because it also has a force working behind it. Favor is not something that is feeble. Favor is very powerful. Powerful because it can change situation. It can change events. It can change the story, the history of a lineage forever. It's very powerful. It's very active. And when I mean that if you take time very well to look at the life of those people who carry favor over their lives, you will discover that the way they enjoy divine provision is as if they have heaven in their hands and they can command heaven at will. And sometimes you wonder if God is not preferential in the way he does his things. And like T.D. Jakes says, favor is not fear. Because the issue about favor is that favor is preferential. Because whatever will abandon one and prefer the other is preferential. And 
when it comes to the issue of favor, it's preferential. All of us are equal, not by whatever. We are equal only by creation. But when it talks about value and relationship, we are not the same. God created all of us the same way. And that's why the issue of human rights and equality is not a scriptural topic. Otherwise, you will have done well to justify why God will have chosen Israel and not other people as well. And if you have been there by his grace, you will have known that why would these things happen? People who live in the midst of stones, yet they're having so well, so big, great life. Until tomorrow, no country will ever ride over Israel. The covenant of favor is what is so much over their lives. So favor is a powerful thing. Favor is also an influencer. It's mystery because it's an influencer. It can influence decision to work in your favor. Some years ago, about that was 1994, I was privileged to sit down with some with a group of people deci deciding they want a very big contract. And the head of the team was talking about who are we going to add to the team to help us take care of these and these and that. And the meeting lasted for about two hours, trying to juggle who should be this and what should be that and that should be this and there should be that one. At a point in time, they decided a man who, who is very key and who is going to even take the largest chunk of the, of the contract, that he will take care of this side of the project. And they closed the meeting. And we were about scattering and everybody was about going. Until somebody just said, no, no, no. We said, what? Again. He said, come, 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 come. And we sat down again. Within just one minute, the man who had to take the largest chunk was dropped. Another man was picked. Why? A friend of mine who was seeking for a job together in those years, and he went for an interview, he never understood what it was all about, and he described it was a multinational company. How they made the mistake, we don't know. But the day they were called for the second test or final interview, I don't know. At the gate, as they were calling their names, this Korean or whatever company, and they were asking them to come in. And they called his name. Lo and behold, they met, they called one name, first name, second name, third name, two persons answered. Two persons. And it became a talk of war. No, it is me. It is not you. It is me. So the man by the gate, they didn't know what, he didn't know what to do again. So they went back and called the Oyimbo man. The Oyimbo man just came and said, mm, you, come. As if he was mad. Fine enough. Well, that day, thank God, it was my friend that was picked. And that was what turned the story of my friend till tomorrow to a millionaire. And it didn't only affect him, it affected his family entirely till tomorrow. Now, tell me the parameter for choosing you. <laughs> Come. Parameter. A white man just appeared at the gate and said, mm, you, come. This is not a stranger. This is not somebody distant to me. I can give you his phone and his address now, now. <laughs> and he can relay the same story now and now. Favor is an influencer. So when we are talking about favor, it's more than a topic for prayer. Is a serious issue that in life 
we must not toy with. While preparing the material, I read something from Pastor E. Adebuye. He says, favor can make a big difference in your life, family, business, and projects. In this world, there are two classes of people, the favored and the disfavored. The favored class, however, has various levels from one to infinity. I am one of those who belong to the class of the favored. <laughs> Though I'm still ascending the ladder. And I know I'm going to go higher than this. And so I wish all of us in the name of Jesus. Favor is something that is very, very important in our lives. And I would like us to read a few passages of the scriptures as we wrap it up this morning. Because today we want to introduce so that we can see and begin to think and begin to pray. And I want to go back to that book and read again, read again, read it again. Psalm 30 verse 7. Psalm 30 verse 7. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled. By your favor, you make my mountain stand strong. When the favor of God is over a life, you appear the wisest. You appear, you appear the most spiritual. In fact, you win envy as quick as possible. Because it's like everything working for you. And it's like there's something unusual about your life. And one funny thing about favor is this. When it comes over a life and people try to come close to see what is the mystery about your life, they couldn't see anything so special. That's one funny thing about it. When you come close to people who carries the favor of God, you try to size them up and say, what is the big thing about this guy? Nothing. In terms of physical qualities that men will always appraise as one of the factors, you can't see anything so special about him or about her. When you hear about Samson carrying the pillars of this, carrying the pillar of that, do you think Samson looks like a Mr. Macho? Do you think he looks hefty with his muscles? No! What carries the pillar is, is nothing. It takes grace and God. And that's why it was very difficult for people to easily recognize Jesus because when he moves amidst the people, there is nothing so special and unique about this guy called Jesus. Nothing so special about him. But the truth is that for those who are custodians of grace and favor of God, there is nothing so special that you can see. Maybe the mark or something over their life. You could have thought that probably fire would have been coming out of their mouth. No fire out of their mouth. They are not taller than as any usual. They are not bigger than anything. They, are, they don't appear anything so, I don't know. They don't appear anything so special. And that's why they win envy easily. Because you look at them what you can use to hedge them out. You can see. But what they carry is on the inside of them is from the hands of the most eye. Favor. Favor. Favor is a powerful thing that we need. Presence of favor in a life is an indication that God is keeping watch over such a person. Because the Bible describes favor sometimes as the oil of favor or sometimes oil of gladness or sometimes the sweet aroma of his presence. So anybody that carries the favor of God is a clear indication that the watchful eyes of this God is over his life. All things are coordinated and progressive when God's favor is available. A life of dominion and royalty 
is possible when favor is there. When you carry favor, no more shame, no more reproach. They may try to embarrass you. You have gone beyond that level. You know, there is a level you are, and when they mess you up, you are gone. But at the point in time you carry the favor of God, God just turned their mess around to another mess, uh, a, a, a wonderful, massive party for you. Favor. Favor. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Favor is very, very, very important. And Jesus increased in one. Can I hear you louder, please? Two. And in three. Your wisdom is useless. Your healthy growth is useless if you have no favor. It must accompany whatever. How many people are so good at what they are doing and nobody sees them? Haven't you met people who say, ah, 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 you can do this kind of thing like this? You do it so well like this? Where have you been? Where have you been? People need people like you. The issue is that they are wise, but there is no favor that can announce them. I pray for somebody, the favor of the Lord shall come over your life. I said the favor of the Lord shall come over your life. In terms of Jesus, Jesus increased in wisdom. Two, in stature. Three, and in, see, and in Favor. He needs favor too. No wonder why about seven or nine women voluntarily submitted themselves and their trade to finance her for a whole three and three years plus. If you think it's easy, go and call for women to begin to sponsor you. I will discover that. The kind of entrance he had was so magnanimous, was so big, so massive. Despite the fact that there were attacks here, there were attacks there. In fact, when they even attack him sometimes, you discover that all the applause will just go down, phew, disappear. Why? The man carries what? The favor of God over what? Over his life. It is so exciting that favor gives you favor before God. Hmm. Favor begets favor. And that's why we have levels of what? Of favor. And I pray for somebody who is also journeying with me this morning. That as I journey too in this road of favor, we shall go higher and higher in the name of Jesus. The kind of favor no man can embarrass. I said the Lord will release over his church in the name of Jesus. Favor from level to level, from height to height, from glory to glory, shall the Lord accord over our life in the name of Jesus. We need favor, I tell you. And I know what I'm talking about. But for some of you who grew up, you, your parents were rich, very rich, you don't, you don't have a problem. I was sharing with a guy recently, one of my sons in Mountain of Fires and Ministry, he came around not too long ago, he was having a big time challenge. And he started rolling out his challenges and problems, his challenges and problems, his challenges and problems. I said, I, and I loved that team. I said, son, go and relax. Do you want to be big in your life? Then wait. Your time is coming too. I say, if you see me, you say, hey, thank God for my mentor. Thank God. But wait for your time. Your own time too will come. It looks as if you are suffering now, but no. It's a matter of time. There was a time when I look around, I, 
I cry in prayer, not because of anything. I cry in prayer because I never see how I can be lifted. I, I never see how possible it is. How I can just eat two square meal. The highest I live was five naira cowbell milk per day. And I will have to wait for the neighbor to bring light. There is this miserable boiling ring. <laughs> But those of you who are born by rich parents, thank God for your life. You don't know, you don't know problem, you don't have problem. You can speak good English. But we who tested poverty left and right, front and back, federal and capital, you know. <laughs> God of mercy. I pray for people like that who are here this morning. The Lord will lift you up. You will tell your own story too. People of God, we need it. We need favor in our lives. It's not only about hard working. Hard working is very good and God required such. But we need favor. We need the oil of favor. We need the oil of grace and gladness over our lives. See this passage, Genesis 28 verse 15. Genesis 28, verse 15. Are you there? Ooh, can you read it? All of us, let's read, I want us to read it together. Genesis 28, verse 15. One, two, go. Does that make sense? Now, listen to me, people of God. Wherever you go, I will bless you. I will not leave you. Somebody is running up and down from God, and God kept on pursuing him. <laughs> Does that look really uh, sane? Ah, this is somebody who voluntarily cheated on his brother, packed his load and whatever, and ran away. And was running from one place to the other, running from he became a fugitive running from one place to the other. And when God accosted him one day and said, Son, where are you running to? In this bush, I am here. I will not leave you, I will bless you. Ah. I think somebody ought to tell God, God, go and sit down. If he doesn't need your problem, it doesn't need your blessing, must you pursue him up and down? But see, when somebody carries you get to a point where you carry the favor of God that you see, it's a done deal. You cannot but be blessed. Even if you are in the bush, they will locate you. They will bless you. So what I have said concerning you, the favor I have issued concerning your life, I will fulfill it. Run to Kilimanjaro or Everest. Go to Mississippi. Go and drown yourself there. I will follow you to that bottom of the water and I will bless you. Hey! I will still bless you. Is, do you see that repeated for anybody? And for God's sake, listen to me, beloved. This is even not to Esau. I think this ought to be given to Esau who was cheated to console him. God gave Jacob extra vite. Take more. Even if you run away, I will still what? I will still bless you. The issue between me and you is beyond running away. Know where you run to that I will not locate you. The issue is that I am under compulsion to bless you. You carry favor, I will bless you. And that's very crucial for us. So when we are talking about favor, favor as a force and as a ministry, let me wrap it up with four things. Number one, favor has such a power that can make doors to be open to you. Doors of opportunity to be open to you even where, where there are difficulty 
of doing so. Where doors are hard closed, you can open the door. And what do I mean? I've told you about the raven before. Raven. The bed. Raven. When it was farming for in Israel, you will have wondered what will have happened to the man called Elijah. Well, because he carries the mandate and the favor of God over his life. The man who carries favor shouldn't die like ordinary bloody civilians. And God says, Raven, go and feed the man. Feed. You see, from what we know in zoology about ravens, ravens don't feed their own kids. So, ravens that will not feed their own kids, now feeding another man's kid, is more than ordinary high. So when we call, when we say doors, doors are closed here, yeah, for those who are under favor, no. Doors that are closed will be opened. Number two, favor as a force connects you or connects to you or you to people that could be termed great. My professor will say is uh, an Igbo man. I mean, a Niger Delta man. He was telling one of our friends one day. He said, he called his and said, so so so, don't be double for Igbo every hour because you want something from Igbo's hand. No, the that friend of mine just wanted something from this white man. So he, by the time he, you know, Igbo doesn't understand good money, sir. So he just was ah, don't prostrate for Igbo man. Because of what you want to take get from him. Good morning, Mr. John is enough for him, woman. <laughs> when you carry the favor of God, it will connect you. After Saul was anointed, what happened to him? He started enjoying unusual connection. He, he met three men that gave him something powerful. One, bread. Two, uh, uh, animals for sacrifice. Three, wine. And those three are very, very significant. The man that was called the least in his kingdom, or in his lineage, when you carry favor, you are connected automatically. It's not by doing a parutu and baru, 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 that we always do. When you carry favor, you will discover that God began to bring your way, your path. People you never believed possible. People you, in fact, cheaply, you just see them around you, coming your way. You meet them, they meet you, and they are, they are ready to open their hearts to you. And they ask you, what can I do for you? I wanna, and you are even, you get to a point you are shivering to even ask, you mean what? You mean? <laughs> the issue is that favor is working for you. Favor is working for you. I say favor is working for you. I say favor is working for you. I say favor is working for you. Number three, favor is a force that guarantees you a reward even in hard regions and seasons in the book of Job Job says there is hope for a tree if it what falls at the smell of water what will happen again it will sprout it will sprout. See, sometimes when we are passing through hard seasons, we felt it's over. No. It came. And it will what? It will go. But you see, down, 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 down there, 
at the lowest, so-called lowest ebb of life, we can still enjoy what? We can still enjoy favor that will pick us up again and give us a fresh flight. Wherever there is favor, you can be guaranteed of a reward. There is always a reward. Even when they abandon you, even when they forsake you, even when your friends run away from you, it's a matter of time. Number four, the force of favor secures and sustains you on the flight to greater height. When you carry the favor of the Lord over your life, you will not sleep. You will not fall. It takes favor to protect. And I don't know, I don't, I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. If you, have, if you have heard about the word fornication and adultery before, if you think you, <laughs> it's by your power that you are standing, it's a lie. Oh. So I'm a very disciplined person. Eh? <laughs> there are people who are more disciplined. It takes grace and fever. It takes grace and fever. The last Bible passage I want us to close with is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10. 6 verse 10. 6 verse 10. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities, you did not, you did not, is that okay? Houses filled with all kinds of good things. You did not. You did not what? Wells. You did not. And vineyards and olive groves. You did not. What is the meaning of that? Favor. Living in a house you didn't build. Somebody said, is that fair? It's not fair. Sincerely, it's not fair. It's not fair at all that somebody will get a house he didn't build. It's not fair. Somebody will eat from the pot where he didn't cook. Is it fair? It's not fair. But that is favor. When the favor of God is over a man, it goes beyond your effort. It goes beyond your power. It goes beyond your wisdom. The Bible says, I will give you a land you never build, a house you never build. I will give you fruit you never plant. I will just give you favor. I will pour favor over your life. Is it? Thank God it was not somebody who said it. God said, I will do this for you. This is, our greatest problem is this. We cannot believe. God is not asking us to suspend working. That, is, um, that amounts to laziness. God didn't ask us to abandon our building project. No, 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 no. That amounts to uh, a, a life without pursuit and vision. But what God is showing to us by this explanation is that I will bring you to a place you never imagine you can get to in life. I will bring you to a platform you never believe you can attain in life. I will give you something beyond your capacity, something beyond your wisdom. By your strength, you can do something. But there's something beyond that which your strength can give to you. That is what I'm going to what? I'm going to give to you. And that is what is called favor. And that is why favor is not what? It's not fair. Beloved, you can provoke favor to work for your life. I want us to rise up this morning as we pray and talk to the Lord. Favor is very real, and I know what I'm talking about. 
I've not spoken to you about theory this morning. I've spoken to you what I know. I know what it means for one door to close and another door to open. I know what it means. I know what it means to receive without even asking. Beloved, I know by His grace, not by power, not by might, what it means to enjoy the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and adding no sorrow. I know. I want you to lift up yourself to the Lord this morning and say, Father, I need your favor over my life. We are sparing the next three minutes to pray. Just spread yourself to God like somebody who needs mercy from him this morning. Lord, I need favor over my life. Me, I need it. Even if they don't need it. My neighbor may not need it, but me, I need it. It can work in the business. It can work in the family. It can work on your ministry. It can work on anything. It's a matter of you and God. It can work in your academics. Are you talking to him this morning? I need your favor, Lord, over my life. I don't know whether you have added enough. Me, I have not added enough. I still want more. I want more of him, Lord. I want more of his grace. More of his favor over my life. My wisdom enough will not do whatever status I have attained in the midst of human beings will not do. I need your favor. I need your favor. Are you praying this morning? Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. We have two more minutes to go. Lord, I need your favor. Over my business, I need your favor. Over my family, I need your favor. I need your favor. Favor, 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 favor. I didn't ask you to ask for pastor's favor now. You know how much you spend to get the favor of Fashola. You know how much you spend to get the favor of Good Luck Jonathan, that minister, that commissioner. Ask God. The favor of the Lord supersedes all. Lord, I need your favor over my life. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. I don't know what burdens your heart this morning. Open your hearts to him and say, Father, I need your favor. Favor. As I raise my kids, Lord, I need your favor. 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 Favor, Lord. As I ascend one ladder to the other in my career, Lord, I need your favor. In my company, I need your favor. Among my colleagues, I need your favor. In my exams, I need your favor. In that interview, I need your favor. Favor is an influencer. It can influence situations and circumstances to work for you. Are you talking to him this morning? Lord, I need your favor. 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 Show me your favor, Lord. Talk to him. Talk to him. One more minute to go.
Talk to him. Talk to him. I need your help. Pour your favor over my life. Let my life shine. Let my face shine. Let your glory be revealed over my life. Let your hands be seen over my life. Let your power be witnessed in my whole life too. Let me testify that I have a God who cannot fail. sing it together. Let's sing it together. I want more of you, Lord. I want more of you. I want more of your favor, Lord, over my life. favor from us, we are gone. All our efforts will be equal to zero. All our stress will be equal to nothing. Father, this morning, as a church, as individuals, as family members, we ask, oh God, this day, it's not too much for you to pour favor on each person each home. Lord, we ask that you will bend that your jar of oil from heaven above and you will pour your oil of favor over us in the name of Jesus. That which causes pain, that which causes sorrow, that which causes, causes delay and retrogression, you would take hold of them and you will turn them around and you make them to be a point of reverence for testimonies of your greater power in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. We believe you have been blessed by the message. If you need us for prayers and counseling, contact us through 080-335-17205 or 01-740-6157. God bless you. You are a champion.